Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. Today we're here in Coverack. Today to do a four and a half mile circular walk. It'll take us down the coast towards Cadrith and to the Terence Coventry Sculpture Garden. Coverack is on the Lizard Peninsula, just south of St Kevin. Our walk today is taken from southwestcoastpath.org.uk. We've been waiting to do this walk, haven't we, Andrew, for the perfect day. It's looking gorgeous today, isn't yeah, it? Look at that water. You're going to like oh, Coverack, it's beautiful. It is, it's so cute. For our walk today we've parked here, this is the St Kevin Parish Council Charity Car Park. It's a generously sized car park. We do know that in summer months it does get busy, so get here early. So the first walk instruction tells you to make your way down to the harbour, so you turn right out of the car park. And you can't miss it, you can see the sea from up in the car park, so you know where to go. The instructions also suggest that you read this board, don't they, Andrew? They do, because Coverack's got a very unique geology. Okay. But I will need to read this first because to I'm find not out a, about it. I am not a geology lecturer, as you know. Okay, so I think I've got this now. It tells us that much of the Lizard Peninsula represents a slice of ancient ocean floor pushed to the Earth's surface when two former continents collided. So you have what would have been formerly the ocean crust, the gabbro, then you have a transition zone where the beach is. That's your moho. That's your moho, and then you've got your serpentine, which would have been part of the Earth's mantle. The one thing that you need to take away from this is that we can see the Earth's mantle. Yeah, in the form of serpentine, which is a unique rock found here on the lizard. Climb this, cross this little rise. It's not, not too challenging, is it, Andrew? A little gentle stroll. But the cottages up there with their thatch roofs come into view. So this is the older part of the village, and it's clustered around the harbour. It's still a working harbour and you do get that sense of community with the fishermen bringing their catches in and there's little kayaks that you can hire down there in the summer. It's just a idyllic down here. Yeah. Isn't it? I wonder as well whether there is that unique sense of community here because they really did go through it a few years ago because there was a freak, well, oh. s summer flooding, wasn't yeah. there? And it really devastated the village. They had some people, uh, people were airlifted away, weren't they? Yeah. It really did quite um, terrifying. Right, cause problems here, didn't it? But they it's completely repaired now. Yeah, <laughs> no, no evidence no, of it, is there? No. Andrew. Yes. We've got it wrong again. Why is that? You've brought a packed lunch with us. Oh, I could have had a and pasty. And you could have had a pasty. I'm told these are possibly the best pasties in Cornwall. Yeah. These are the pasties in Coverack. <laughs> we won't know today. We'll have to come back again. Another reason for coming back. <laughs> Let's go down to the harbour and have a look at those beautiful little boats. So we're here just at the edge of the harbour. Coverack Harbour, a good example of a Cornish harbour, the main quay dating from 1724. I can stay here for an hour or so just watching the activity around the harbour, the little boats coming in. This is what Cornwall means to me actually. Yeah. Coming somewhere quiet like this, slightly off the beaten track. Just watching people going about their daily business isn't it? Yeah, bringing in the catch. And yeah. It's Beautiful. all very sedate isn't it? And calm and happy and content. Like me. <laughs> So 
our route today is taken from the South West Coast Path website and it just says to pick up the South West Coast Path, which is over here, follow me, <laughs> around the Paris Hotel. So behind you is the Paris Hotel. Nothing to do with Paris, is it? No, you know all about it. Well, I, I wouldn't go that far, <laughs> but it's certainly named after a wreck of SS Paris, which was a, um, I think it was a liner actually that went down, um, I think off the Manacles between here and St Kevin, probably looking at, at the turn of the last century, early 1900s um, I think. That's how it's got its name? Yeah. Structures, aren't they? <laughs> I have a slight fascination for the succulent. I just make it feel so tropical. To prove my point, here we have a Echium pinonana. Now they are originally from the Canary Islands, I believe, and then you've got the beautiful succulent behind and a palm tree in Cornwall and a backdrop of the sea. <laughs> So the echium is currently my favourite plant and we discovered one outside a house this summer didn't we in St Ives? <laughs> it was for sale in a little pot wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. I think it was three, three pounds or something. So we picked it up and it, we'll give it a go. We do get a bit of wind in our garden so next summer it could end up on the floor. But at least we'll have had a try won't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. Before we go too far, can I just show you this? Come here. Oh. <laughs> have you met the Beach Boys? <laughs> So good, oh, aren't they? Good. Oh, brilliant! I love the hair. So you're the fifth beach boy now, are you? So we're gonna take the lower cliff path to the left. Shine House Point was the site of one of many promontory forts or cliff castles built around the coast of Devon and Cornwall during the Iron Age, about 2,000 years ago. These structures made use of the defensive properties of headlands like Shine House Point, taking advantage of the steep cliffs to protect the fort from the sea, while building banks and ditches across the neck of the promontory to defend it from the landward side. The remains of the rampart at Shine House Point have recently been exposed by the National Trust, who have also introduced grazing to control the scrub. I feel like an Iron Age warrior eating my lunch, defending my land from sea. You're defending it with a sandwich? Yeah, from fishermen. How's that going? Pretty good, they're still out there. <laughs> I'm still eating my lunch. I'd rather have an Elizabeth's pasty. <laughs> oh no, we missed a trick then, we should get more organised. Yeah. How are we doing? We haven't gone very far really. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're right here on the end at the moment, end of Chanel's Point. So our walk today is going to go all the way down to Blackhead and then come back towards Coverack. But we are going to go on a diversion up to the Sculpture Park. Oh! Terence Coventry Sculpture Park. Looking forward to that. Come on then, let's get packed up and get back walking. Instructions tell us to go straight across and back up the hill but that beach down there that cove is too tempting I can't walk past that and not go down there the sea looks so inviting the noise is so calming let's go and have a look Looking for sea glass? No, not no. on this beach. All right, what have you found then? Serpentine. Oh, okay. The colours in it, the red. Let's see if I can and it's show really that off. smooth. The action of the wave has really made it quite smooth, mm, hasn't yeah. it? But you can see the reds in it. I can see some greens in that as well. That's what polishes up, and they make 
ornaments out of it. They used to even make fireplaces out of it in Victorian times. Great big mantelpieces. Oh, wow. It's all over the beach here. Pretty sure years ago when we did a lizard walk, we filmed a man carving a bit of serpentine. I'll have to dig out the footage and insert it now. A little magic Disney ride hollow. Apparently, the sculpture garden is along this path. Oh my goodness me! Sculpture park. Yeah. yeah. I'm not so keen to be honest with you. Oh come. Just like going to ponce in it. If it's free. Is it free? Is it? Yeah. You sure it's free? Yeah. All right, come on in. Let's see that. <laughs> Keep expecting to see it round every corner. No, this doesn't look like it. Are we there yet? We found it. This is impressive. It is. Have an explore. Yes. Wow, this looks like a horse, doesn't it? Doing a whinny. <laughs> Andrew, I've got a challenge for you. Can you get our dog to do the same pose? Well, stay. Hey! <laughs> Excuse me, part. I'm looking for a great big giant horse slash giant dog thing. Have you seen one? No, mate. Nothing to do with me. Nothing to see here, all right? All right, then. I'll keep looking. Cheers now. They say two's company but three's a crowd, Sarah. It's quite impressive really, there's very little detail. Just a few angles. And it's the proportion, I guess, as well, that you know that's a human figure. And there's such joy in it. I wonder what that's meant to mean. Have they just left work for the last time and retired? Have they just found out they're pregnant? Just found a chocolate bar at the bottom of the handbag. Yay! <laughs> Freedom! It's always fascinates me when you have something like this and it's like, how do they get the balance of the weight of the material so that it does what they want it to do? So I start thinking about the inside, the metal work that they covers and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't know. Beautiful. It is, isn't it? Really gorgeous. They've done a lovely job of it. Alright, we're going to carry on with our walk. I think we should. Oh, that's another itch scratched. That's brilliant, isn't it? We've been yeah. wanting to do that for ages. We found out about that place about a year ago, didn't we? And oh, we've been trying to find a walk that brings us through it. Yeah. I'm, I haven't got a clue what I was looking at. I just think it's what, what makes my mind tick over is the weight of things and how he gets them to balance and whether there's counterweights at one end or it's thinner on metal. I don't know. That's the bit that gets my brain going. I think it's the simplicity of form and shape that did it for me. Oh, amazing. He's converted. So we've been aware of that sculpture garden for a while now and wanted to do this walk, but we also posted a little Instagram photograph asking for your suggestions your favourite walks and one of them was from Caroline who runs the Pisky Pals here in Coverack and she suggested this walk so that's one of the reasons that we've come today she said it's a beautiful walk and I think so far yeah on the money spot on absolutely yeah if you find yourself um, down in Coverack in sort of uh, school holiday time yeah for Cornish Pisky Pals and the Pisky Trail it's a lot <laughs> it's of fun yeah <laughs> Have you finished it? Yeah! Do you need some help? No. <laughs> What's the last pisky's name? 
Whoa. Ah. Ah. You don't ah have it all then. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. It's the name of the Switching actress in, in, in Miranda who who uh grew up. Uh, Sally. Oh Sally. Oh. <laughs> I think I was gonna well do the uh, um This is looked after by the National Trust now. It says Blackhead was described in the middle of the 19th century as a bare and gloomy promontory but remarkable for the beauty of its serpentine. A naval signal station is shown on the 1811 Ordnance Survey map. This was built at Blackhead during the Napoleonic Wars to watch out for French invasions. In 1891 a local guidebook noted that only the gable end and chimney were remaining. At the beginning of the First World War, local fishermen recruited as auxiliary coast watchers built a rough shelter made of rocks and turf with a galvanised iron sheet roof and driftwood roof supports and seats, which they nicknamed Hotel Cecil. The present purpose-built lookout was constructed in 1915 and remained in use until 1987. That must be the Lizard Headland. Right yeah. on the end. And that's the Lloyd's Signal Station. Okay. Right on the very end. And then you'd have Lizard Village. And the first little inlet, I think that might be Cadgeworth. We walked there, haven't we? Yeah. We're just wondering what this little village that we can see in the distance is. I got a feeling it's Cougar. We've never been there, have we? It's either Cougar or Cougar. Cougar. Arr. Or Cougar C rhymes with. We're going inland now, following a hedge. That's a bit tight. I thought that. <laughs> and you're skinny. Where are we going, by the way? Okay. Farmyard trails with Sarah and Andrew and Cornish walking trails. <laughs> At least it's not muddy today. Oh, I know. You wouldn't want your best shoes on, would you? <laughs> okay, so they're, they're all coming towards us now. Cows. These instructions are confusing me. Uh, going through to follow the left hand hedge of the next Going field. The field on the left just before the trees and carrying on in the same direction to the far corner. Mm. Lots of follow lefts and keep lefts, isn't it? And fields. Should we get the um, ordnance out? Yeah. Very interesting case. Yeah, we went through the gate, came back again. Right, so. So the footpath, we think, takes you through there. This is the field where the cows are. And every time we go through there, they get very interested. We've got a doggy, we've got to be sensible. So we're going to actually choose to take this green route and then back down the road. Sensible, I think. Yeah. It works up an appetite. Yeah. Well, there you go. Beauties, aren't they? Yeah. Look at them. <laughs> Massive. <laughs> no. <laughs> and a gluten free option. You've got the biggest grin on your face. <laughs> Not much left. <laughs> Need to do another four and a half miles now. Don't Walk that off. <laughs> uh, 
four and a half mile circular walk from Coverack back to Coverack. Yeah, fantastic. Finished over <laughs> a lovely cream tea in the Bay Hotel. Yes. Very nice. Oh, I just want to curl up now, don't yeah. you? Yeah, and we took in a bit of culture today, Sarah, didn't we? We went to the Terence Coventry Sculpture Park. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, I didn't know what it was about, but I had a lovely time. <laughs> so the walk itself was taken from the Southwest Coast Park website. Yeah. And how would you rate the instructions? Well, they're dead easy going out, and then we got a little bit lost coming back. And I don't yeah. know if it was us, a mixture of us, cows, or the instructions. So, we did get back in one piece. So. <laughs> what would you score it then? For me, I've had a lovely day. It's an 8 out of 10 for me. Yeah, I think it's a wonderful walk, and I love Coverack. And I, I could live in Coverack, but I think the instructions had a bit of a wobble, so it's a 4 out of 10 for me. 4? Yeah! Wow. Oh, well, we'll go in the middle. We'll call it 6 then. To help us grow our channel, please subscribe and consider supporting us on Patreon.